All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Joe Torriello. I'm a sixth grade teacher at Benjamin Franklin Middle School in Teaneck, New Jersey. I teach in a general and also an inclusion setting. And thank you for spending some time with me today. Today, I'm going to talk to you about escape rooms and how we can make digital and virtual escape rooms for our learners. And when I first heard about this, you know, I, I couldn't wrap my mind around how we were going to do this because I think of the brick and mortar, you know, escape rooms you can go to the places that, you know, there's in Montclair, Hackensack and Englewood in Morristown, you know, there's these actual escape rooms that you go to with a bunch of people. Some of them are themed and, you know, there's hidden clues and puzzles to solve and, you know, so you can eventually escape the locked room you're in. But then as I learned a little more about these virtual rooms, I started to understand is, you know, how I can create these and how I can use Google and G Suite services, such as Google Classroom, Google Forms, Docs, Drawing, and Google Sites, how I can create digital escape rooms for my learners that are immersive and engaging and, you know, help students learn in a different way. So a finished product and looking at an escape room, something along the lines of here with using Google Sites, okay? And I'll take you through each component of here because this is, if you will, the actual, the room, the escape room, our virtual escaping room, all right? So that's what I'm gonna be talking to you today about how to create these, you know, using G Suite with Google Sites, Google Forms, Docs, Google Drawing, how some certain tips and tricks that you can use when embedding links and so forth. So really for me where it starts with is, you know, first in my Google Drive, I make sure I try to keep myself as organized as I can. Um, you know, I did make an escape room once for my sister or my two nieces to keep them, you know, engaged during the summer. But, you know, just for today is my, and within there, this is kind of how I start off with this escape room planning template. Now it's all filled out because you'll I will show you how this connects to the finished product here. But really on my planning template, I have my objective, the content. So for this one, I'm again I'm a math and social studies teacher, so I'm going to be talking about fraction, ancient Egypt information. And now, you know, to escape. The students are going to need certain clues to solve and they'll need to find out what are the codes. So if you'll see on my screen here where it says answer key, there's one, two, three, four, five. These are the answers. So I'm working backwards. Here's the codes. A type of code. It can be a directional such as up, down, left, or right. A letter word lock. I have two of those here, a color lock, and a digital, I'm sorry, a four digit number lock. So what these apply to are here. You can see the hand activates. I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five different clues that my students will click into and they'll have to solve. And now on my end, I know that I'm going to use a directional one, some letter word locks, a color lock, and another a four digit number lock. And here's how I'm going to go about this. I set up in my details here, how am I going to use this digital code? I'm going to use Google Drawings and a map. For denominator, this 11 letter word lock, I'm going to use a jigsaw puzzle scrambler, and I have links down here to different resources that I use, and I'll certainly be able to share this. For the other word lock, I'm going to use a Rebus cipher code, put that into Google Drawing. For the color lock, so R O Y G B P, doesn't make any sense right now, but I'll show it to you as we go through this. So I'm going to use Google Drawings, and I want my students to add and subtract fractions with like and unlike denominators. They'll be doing a drag and drop, and once they finish dragging and dropping, they'll actually see in order the colors for the code. And then lastly, on a Google Doc, I'm going to have some facts for my students on Egypt, 
and I want them to research the length of the Nile in miles, that will give them their answer. All right, you'll notice I put little asterisks down here. I'm going to talk about those in the Google form with validation codes and different descriptions I give my students. So now that I have, I'm going to have one, two, three, four. I'm going to have five clues. Now I'm actually going to assemble those clues. And I'm going to start to create each clue. So this first one here, it's directional. I've used Google Drawings, and I have a map here. Now, what we mean by directional is because students have to track where they're going. So they're at the entrance. Their first movement is to Tut Ave and Gold Street. So they're going right. Cleopatra Ave and Gold Street. Cleopatra Ave, Gold Street. Then they're going up. So, so far we've gone right and up. So again, students will be figuring out directional codes from this map. I have a puzzle jumbler here that once students put these puzzles together, they'll be revealed a code. Here's the drag and drop. Now I have for my students here, like in just a little background on ancient Egyptians and how they use math. I also have for them up here, different websites where they can actually use manipulatives. They can actually use fraction bars, fraction strips to solve some of these. And here's the problems that we have on the left side here. So once students solve these, the answer bank is right here. And then they're going to drag their answers into the box wherever they believe it goes. So we have a hole here. Once they solve these, whichever one gives them a, one hole as an answer, they would drag it to wherever it needs to go. Then once they've dragged all of their answers, then they'll realize, okay, I can see the colors in order. Maybe that's the code. Maybe it's purple, blue. So it'd be P, B, O, R, Y, G. Then we have a rebus code here where I type in for them the word. And again, it's another resource that I have down here the rebus creator. And it's up to them to kind of figure out it's a word and it has seven letters in it. What is that word? And then that will be another cue for them on their form. And then the last code, the lifeblood of Egypt, talking about the Nile. So there's some facts here that I want them to go through, read through it. Credit has been given to National Geographic. And then down here, the Nile River is about blank miles long. So once they research that, they'll have a number, and that will be their cue for the four-digit number lock. All right. So we have all these clues. All right. We have all these. I will show you how all those, those five different clues end up being in here. But we need something for them to break out. We need a way for them to enter in their answers. Enter the Google form. So with my Google form here, it's kind of where they will track and they will input their answers. So for instance, for the six direction lock, U is for up, D is for down, L is for left, R is for right, all caps, no spaces. So Another key important thing, and not only for escape rooms, but if you're using it for Google Forms for assessment in general, is right down here, the description and response validation. So I have them checked. Now, description is what allows me to type U for up, D for down, L for left, R for right. The response validation is this down here. I'm looking for a specific set of letters which is right here. So this regular expression must match R-U-L-U-L-D in capitals. If they enter in anything other than this, they will get our validation message here, trace that map carefully. Now what that would look like, actually let me give you a couple more examples. So the 11 letter word lock, when I click into it, here's our validation. Descriptions is, it's going to be all capitals, it's a regular expression, and it must match denominator 
in all caps. Now for the color lock. First letters only, all capitals, no spaces. Example, O-P-Y-B-B equals orange, purple, yellow, blue, black. If that was colors that they saw in a clue. Regular expression matches R-O-Y-G-B-P. And then I just had a note here, you know, use scrap paper when adding or subtracting fractions. If they got it wrong, they would see the validation right here. Now, as we go through here, we have our Google form. So now we're ready to almost go. We have in here now, make sure some things we don't want to really have checked. I don't want to restrict it to anyone from, I don't want to restrict it. So if I had this checked, it would only be for people in my school district. I don't want to limit responses. So this is how we'd want it to be set up. Don't have anything checked. Now for presentation, here is where you can put a confirmation message. Once they solve it, what they'll see. So once they enter everything correctly, they'll see, congratulations, you successfully opened up the ancient Egyptian treasure chest. See Mr. T to receive your treasure. And again, we don't need anything checked here. Okay. Now, we have our codes. Our five codes have been created. The Google form is created where the answers will be inputted. Now it's time to get to here, the Google site. Here's what it's look like. Here's what it looks like when it's published. Here's what it looks like when I'm working with it. Okay. So now let me just show you. I'm just going to use a blank one. I've already kind of come up with one as just an example to show you what it looks like. So we have a Google site open now. The codes and the clues are created. The Google form is created. Now it's time to create the room, if you can think about it like that. This is going to be our room. So you can see from how I have it set up, I kind of, you know, I like to put the title. I kind of like to give students a little intro right here. So for here, you know, same thing. Code cracker. Now, to come up with a new section, we're just going to double click. I'm going to click the text box and So this is where I set up a story for my students. I come up with something. In this case, we're talking about ancient Egypt and a treasure chest that's never been opened and there's codes on it. It's up to you to open it. So I try. I like to set the stage for them to get into the moment. It's also a good way for me whenever I'm introducing a topic or we're closing out a topic just to kind of give them a background, you know, a little connection to what it was we were working with in the classroom. So I set up the story here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click underneath it. And then you'll see, again, I kind of like to keep the same format and my students kind of get used to it with, you know, they understand that, all right, these now, we're going to have to use these clues. Now, also, this first image here does not necessarily match up with this first box here. That's part of the challenge. I don't want it to be too easy. So that's what they have to figure out as they're going through it. So I like to keep that format, you know, the title, a little intro. And then I put my clues here. So for doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just insert an image. I'm just going to do a Google search. Now I have a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, so I'm just going to uh, put that in there. I have the black and tan kind. That looks like Jack. So I have it here, right? Now, but there's nothing here, like how when I was here, the hand is active because there's something behind it. We have it linked. Now, I'll start from this one. Excuse me, this one. Something very important also is when I'm up here, when I click share, I want to make sure that anyone with the link can access this. This is important. Not just my school district, 
or restricted. I want to make sure anyone with the link can access this. So I already have that checked. Now I'm going to copy the link for this to map. I'm going to come back here, click on pretend jack, insert a link. Now this is also very important and this can be applied to any other uses with G Suite. I'm going to paste it, but look right here. This part here, you are going to, from where it says edit and to the right, you are going to delete that and you are going to write copy. Because unfortunately, we may all have had a situation where we shared a Google document with our student or our coworkers, and it was our original. They didn't make a copy, and they did some changes to the document we wish they didn't change. By doing what we just did and replacing that back part with copy, anytime now someone clicks into your image, they are forced to do this, copy document. So it automatically makes a copy for them. It will not alter your original. But you always have to, when you are in here, and again, now we already did it, make sure this back part here, the very last thing, make sure it says copy. That way, you are good. So I have the clues in there now, and you'll get the sense that I would kind of do something similar, put them along down here if I needed to make more room. Well, we don't want, you know, we want to keep it similar to those brick and mortar escape rooms, so there has to be a time limit. I'm going to click down here again, and this time I'm going to use embed. Just going to open up a new tab. I'm going to type YouTube 45 minute countdown. All right, I'm just going to go with this. Copy this link, and I'm going to paste it. So now we have our 45 minute timer in there. Okay. Now we need to put the Google form here. I'm going to double click. I'm going to go to my drive. Now, since we just worked with the Google form, it should be pretty close to where my recents are. And there you see it Code Cracker. So there it is. Now I can make it bigger, of course. So I can make it bigger for my students. And now it's in there. Now it looks pretty similar to the one I have created here. So now for instance, when students, the idea is that now they don't necessarily know which of these five clues will match up to here. But let's take direction lock, for instance. After they've clicked through all these clues, they should then come to the understanding that, well, this map is dealing with directions. I'm going right, left, up, down. So they can kind of put it together that probably I'm going to need to use this one for the direction lock. When it comes to this one with the colors, you know, I want them looking at it once they're done and trying to think about how could this be a code. And if they've solved the operations correctly, They'll have the colors of the fractions in the right order. So again, it's it's not holding their hand through much to it. It's letting them, you know, problem solve and think critically and try their best to just think of different ways of how can I approach this. So that's in essence how you could set it up. Now, once it's finished, again, you want to make sure you have shared up here. You want to make sure you change this to public because maybe you want to create something on your own time and you want to share it with friends. Make sure you do it as public. And then you would click publish. And then once you click publish, you will have something looking like this. So now let me touch base on the Google form with when we talked about these validation codes and how for the direction lock, it must be exactly right up left up left down so take a look here when i go to enter these codes then again it's all caps right up left up down all right because i didn't enter it incorrectly now it's right so you see how here 
when I tab and I go to my next code, nothing happened. That means I entered it correctly. If I left off a direction, I did not do it correctly. I can't go on. Now, I know from this one, when they put the puzzle together, it'll then tell them that the word is denominator. And that's correct. Seven letter word lock. When they get to this one, they'll figure out that it's Pharaoh. Six color lock. That's here. Once they solve these correctly, so for instance, three fourths minus a half, they'll work it out. They'll realize that their answer is one fourth. So then they're going to drag the one fourth fraction tile there. And once they have all their colors in place here, they'll find out that in order from top down, and again, that's something they're going to have to figure out. Is Mr. T going top down or is he going bottom up? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And then for the four digit one, when I wanted them to just Google research, the Nile is about how many miles long? About. Oh, they're good to go. There's no other validation codes. If I just left it like this, I can't. I can't go on. It's not right. Now I hit submit, and I can't go on because I didn't put my name. Did not pay attention to the directions. And this is actually a good point too, because when I first did this, I didn't. I left out the name portion, and then I could not figure out who actually did escape. So I would suggest that you always do include. The name at the top. Then when I scroll, congratulations. You successfully opened up the ancient Egyptian treasure chest. See Mr. T to receive your treasure. So just the way that you know I try to make learning engaging and different for students, where here we can work on operations with fractions, but also learn a little bit about ancient Egypt as well. So Here's my contact information. You know, please take it down and feel free to email me for anything because I could definitely go into more depth with you about Google Sites, Google Forms, draw Google Drawings if you've never used that before. And some of these other websites that I have down here for you, you know, how to navigate those and use those and just brainstorm different ideas for our students. Just to keep, you know, again, learning from home, challenging and engaging for students. So thank you for joining me today with Digital Escape Rooms. I hope you had a great day and you learned something new.